What is up guys, this is the Kia DZD, aka The Drink King, and I'm here with a quick tutorial just to go over with you guys. First of all, how I save my beats in the NPC software, and then second of all, how I export my beats and don't have to worry about ever losing a beat. For those of you guys that's been making beats for a while, you know that is a big deal when we save beats on hard drives, flash drives, and then those things become corrupted and all of a sudden, you can't get your beats anymore. I challenge you guys to drop me a comment below and let me know your worst experience with losing beats. But for the last past three or four years, I've developed just this method right here to where I can save my beats, have everything organized, and also never have to worry about losing any beats again. So on screen right now, we have a beat that I finished up. I already have it saved. Obviously, I did that while I was making the beat to make sure I didn't lose anything. But now I'm ready to go on and export it and make sure that everything is organized. So for this particular tutorial, we're going to set everything up real quick. That way you guys can follow along from scratch. So I'm going to exit out of the NPC software where this is my desktop screen. We're gonna need a folder. So I'm gonna just go in on and create one on the desktop and we're gonna call that example beats. Now that we have that made, we're gonna go it on and click inside of that folder and we're gonna create another folder and we're gonna put that as 2023. That's this year right here, okay? Now I know this may be unorthodox, but just follow along with this and you'll see exactly what these two folders are for. And let's hop back into the NPC software. And I'm going to go on to play this beat. That way you guys can check it out. There's our finished beat. And if you notice, I have my drum track up here and then I have all of my instrument tracks after that. So our goal is to get this drum track, first of all, which has all of my drum sounds on it. I have nine drum sounds on that track. We wanna get all of these drum sounds to their own individual tracks. Obviously that's what the explode feature is for. If you don't know about that, I'll go over it in just a second. But before I do that, I wanna make sure I rename this sequence to main sequence. The reason why I do that is because my main sequence lets me know that this is the sequence where the whole beat was created. I can always go back to this main sequence, add stuff to the beat or take stuff out or do whatever I'd like to. The full beat will always be on this sequence. And after I do that, I right click on it and then I go down to copy. And then on sequence two, I name that one EXP sequence. So now I have two of the same sequence copied. Now, obviously the EXP sequence is for the explode sequence. This is where I'm gonna explode my drums and all of the other tracks to make sure that I have everything I want it to be. So let's go on and do that. Let's make sure that we are on the drum track, okay? Now, for those of you guys that don't know what the explode feature does, all it's gonna do is simply mute this drum track right here. And then it's gonna take all of my drums that I have on this track and it's gonna place them below my last track, which is my string track right here. And when we explode, the reason why it's gonna mute this drum track right here is because we don't want two sets of our drums playing. So that's why it does that. So let's go ahead on and do that. Make sure we're on a drum track. We're gonna go up here to the three lines. We're gonna go to edit. Then we're gonna go down to track and then we're gonna go down to explode. And just that quick, we have this drum track muted and then below our string track, which is right here, we now have all of our drum sounds all in their individual tracks. So always hit control S after you do this to make sure that that's saved. That way anything happens, you pick up from this point right here. So now we're ready to go it on and export this thing. So let's go it on and do that by hitting control shift E. That's a shortcut on Windows for the uh, audio mix down screen. I always set my audio tail to about six. The reason why is because I like to have a little bit of ending on my stems to make sure that I catch any echoes, any reverb, any delays, anything like that. And then when I render everything out, I just simply shrink it back to the actual bar. That way I can arrange it very, very easily. It's one of those situations to where I would rather have that ending tail and don't need it than need it and don't have it. For our length, we're gonna be at bar one and then I have a 16 bar loop. So we're gonna, we're gonna make sure we catch all of that. And then we're gonna make sure we are on explode tracks right here. That's gonna make sure that we get everything rendered out in separate audio files. We're gonna make sure we're on wave format. I'm gonna make sure I'm on 24 bit 48K. That's what I made the beat in. That's what my audio interface is set to. So that's obviously what I'm gonna render the beat out as. So now let's go ahead on and hit export. Now we're gonna find those folders that we made at the beginning of the video. So let's go up here to our search bar here. We're gonna hit this drop down arrow. We save those folders on a the desktop. There it is right there, example beats. 
and then we are going to go inside of that 2023 folder that we put inside of there. So first of all, before we start, we're going to make sure that we go down here and we copy the name of the beat by selecting it and then just hitting control C. That's copied now on my clipboard and I'll show you why I do that. OK, let's go down and hit this new folder. We're going to create a new folder inside of this folder right here. And we're going to title that new folder 12-19-2023. And then we're going to hit control V and that's going to paste the name of our beat that we have copied to our clipboard right there beside it. So now we have the date of the beat and then we have the name of the beat and that folder is going to be created inside of our 2023 folder. Boom. There you go. Now we have that there. We can create another folder inside of there and we can call that stems. And then we hit control V and paste the name right there. OK, so to follow our folder path, we have our example beats folder we made inside of that folder. We have 2023 inside of that folder. We have the date and then our title name. And inside of that folder, we have another folder called stems and then the name of our beat. OK, and now we're done making our folders. We can now hit save. So let's go on and save this and it's going to export all of the tracks one by one. I'm going to speed through the video and I'll be back with you guys once it ends this process. A few moments later. OK, we are all done exporting the files and now we're going to go to our desktop and I'm going to show you how this works. Check this out inside of our example beats folder. If we open that up, check out what we have. We have a 2023 folder. Now, once you start doing this, you will have folders that say 2024. You will have folders that say 2000. 25 and obviously so on and so forth but if we go inside our 2023 folder this year we have our beat saved we also have the date of that so now you will start having a list of folders that will say 1220 2023 and then you will have you will have another one that says 1221 2023 and so forth and so on as you continue to make beats day after day. Obviously, you will be making multiple beats in a day. So when you save them inside of this folder, you will have the same first date, but you will have a different last name of the beat. That way it separates it from the individual days. But let's go inside of our folder where we saved our Spare Me Beat. There it is with our stems. And inside of our stems folder, we now have all of our tracks that have been saved from the NPC software. You can rename these tracks if you want. You can keep them the same way, whatever you choose or however you want to do it. And we have everything inside of this example beats folder. Now, the beauty about this organization is I'm going to show you what it does. If I wanted to go inside of this example beats folder, let's say 2023 is over with and I'm done with the beats that I'm making. I can go on and take this folder right here and I can drop that inside of a cloud storage service, something like Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, Foreshared, any of those type of services would allow me to drop this folder inside of it. And now I have a whole year of 2023 catalog beats stored in the cloud and I can access it from anywhere, any device, mobile phone, tablet, computer, anything that allows me to access the internet, I can get to my beats. So now you not only have your beats saved on your computer, but you have your beats saved in a mobile fashion to where you can travel with it and you don't have to worry about any flash drives, any external hard drives, anything like that. Your beats are always saved in the cloud. You also have security features on these services so you can encrypt your files and you can only allow access to the people that you want to have it. Not only do you have your beats secure, but you don't have to worry about losing them and you also can share them with anyone anytime you choose. Once you start building up a list of these folders like this year after year, simply upload your folder to the cloud. You can either delete it off your computer or you can have a second backup on a flash drive or a hard drive just in case you never know two backups never hurt but that's the whole idea to make sure that your beats are very very organized and you have everything where they need to be so take advantage of using those cloud services they have been a big help to me they're free with a few gigabytes of space to start off with if you need to get more space you can simply purchase it for a very 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 low cost from these services ever since i've adopted not only this organization method on my computer but also started uploading my beats to share services and securing them it has been a lifesaver when it comes down to transporting beats 
pulling my beats up from any studio anywhere. All I need is a computer or a mobile phone and we're listening to beats just like that. I hope this has been a help for you guys out there. Again, some of you guys may be doing this already. Drop me a comment below if you do anything like this and also let me know some of the tips that you use when you save your beats. That way I can take some pointers as well. For some of you new guys that are just starting out, this will be a lifesaver to you. It looks like a lot, but once you set these folders up, all you do is just save your beats inside of that same folder, title them, and you're going on with your workflow. That does it for the video, guys. This was just a short one, but very, very informative information. I'll try and bring you more tips and tricks on things like this that I do inside of my process. That way you guys can get some benefit from it and pick up a few things as well. So make sure you hit that like button and drop your comment below. It helps the video to be put in the eyes of more people that it can help. Thank you guys again. Stay safe and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.